Welcome back guys. In this lesson, we'll be dealing with the HTTP post method or verb that allows us to create resources or new records in our database. Now we've worked with post previously when we were setting up our login functionality in our account controller. We did kind of experiment with the post and we explored the fact that we can actually pass in data in the form of the body or an adjacent object that would get deserialized into whatever object we have set up for it. And that way, no sensitive information needs to go across in a URL or in a visible manner. So what we're going to be doing is setting up the post functionality for our hotel so that when we are creating a hotel, we, we can ask the user to send over all the details for our hotel in the form of a JSON object, and then we pass it down to the database. So, I've already prepared the method stub. We have our verb HTTP post, and we will be returning status 400, status 201, as well as status 500. Now notice this is 201 and not 200 because 201 means created. So we'll be indicating to the calling application or the client that yes, whatever you requested to be created has been created. So let us get started. Now, the first thing that I would want to do before I go ahead and create anything or bring over any data into my database is to check if the data coming over is valid. So what I'm going to do is put in an if statement here to say, if not model state is valid. So we did something like that. I believe when we're doing the login where we said is the model state valid, meaning everything that I said is required, is it there? If not, we return the bad request. So we're just going to uh, do the same thing, replicate that step here, where I'm saying, if it is not valid, then we're going to log the error and say that there was an invalid post attempt in that method, right? And we return the bad request. Otherwise, we want to try an operation. So we have our try catch. And you know the uniformity of our code is such that we can actually take these out. So you start seeing that we're kind of repeating certain things because all these things, what if we wanted to change the message then we'd have to change it here, change it in this method, change it here. And then as we expand, we have to have more touch points. So later on, we'll see at how we can kind of abstract out all of this repetition. But right now I just want to make sure that we understand the concepts at hand. Right, so we'll just go ahead and modify the error message and now you can try our operation. Now, what are we going to try? The first thing that I would want to do is to take this DTO and if we just review this DTO, it has name, address, rating, and it expects a country ID. And then we have hotel DTO, which has ID and country. So once again, the reason we're not using hotel DTO is that we don't need the ID value coming across with the create attempt. So that is why we only have the fields that we absolutely need values for outlined inside the create version of this DTO. Now, once I have the DTO, what I want to do is map it. So I'm going to say var hotel is equal to mapper.map into an object of type hotel, which is a data object. And I'm mapping the content of the hotel DTO. Next up, we're going to call on our unit of work. So I'm going to say underscore unit of work dot hotels dot, and then I have insert. What am I inserting? My object of type hotel. Because by the time it gets here, whatever validations you need to put in, you can put in. So here I'm just validating the model state. If you had other things that you needed to make sure are in place before it gets as far as trying to insert it, you make sure you do all of those checks and balances and return the bad request or whatever error status to the client before you actually start doing the insert. And even when doing the insert, if there's an exception, we're still going to return something, except it will be a 500 since the error is probably on our side. So after we call the insert, the next thing we need to do is call the save. So notice when we were just retrieving, we could just do a await that get. There's no save. However, on this occasion, we're altering the, the database. So we have to commit 
the change that we're making afterwards. So that is why we have to call the save. Now, after all of that, we need to return something nice. So what am I returning nice? I'm going to say created. Now I've created and I've created at action, right? They're actually and created at root also. So they all return the 201. It's just that when you say created, it's just the 201. That's it. However, you can say created at root and have it called the endpoint get hotel with the ID required. So it actually returns the created object to the client, which I think is useful. So I'm going to go with created at root. And then I have to specify the name of the root. So in this case, I did say I wanted to go to get hotel. And then after that, I have to specify what parameter values this endpoint might need. So if I look back at get hotel, it needs an ID. So I have to specify a new object and it's going to have a, a field called ID and it's going to be equal to hotel.id. Notice hotel, not hotel DTO. Hotel DTO does not have an ID value. However, after this operation, this object will get updated with its ID and then that is what we will pass along. So let us take this one for a spin. But just before we do that, before I get ahead of myself, we need to let this root know that it has this name, right? So even though it has the name, we need to let it know that it, it is a get operation that goes by that name, not necessarily root, but by that name, right? So I can just append here and say name, is equal. So this is like a little internal nickname now to say, this is your name whenever somebody, your sibling, sibling being another action calls. You. So let us try that again. All right. So we're going to test this one in Postman and I already have an object here. So I actually copied this object from a previous get test. So we already established that the ID is not required. However, just going over to Swagger, just to show you what Swagger is going to care about. When we look at the post for hotel, it's showing us that this is all it's going to care about. So even if we send over extra information, it will be ignored. All right. So that is what our object needs to look like in order to go into our post. So using Postman, I'm actually going to test it with the ID and let's see what happens. So I'm going to click send, make sure that this, the action is on post. We have our endpoint and then click send. And we're getting this error about system invalid operation, no root matches supplied values. So that means we need to restructure the code around the created at root. So going back to the code, let me just see what overloads are there. And we have the string root name, we have the object value, I believe I'm missing the actual object. There we go. So comma and hotel. So we're passing over the ID and the actual object to be displayed. So let's try that again. So the same test that just gave an error, I'm going to try it again. And there we go. So look at the difference between the two payloads. We're getting back our hotel object with the ID value of six, all right? Even the five is 5.0 here, it's five here, right? So just to show you that this didn't count for anything thanks to us not allowing them to submit that data. So that's another reason it's a good idea to use details to kind of sanitize what can come into your API. Now, in addition to displaying the newly created record, another advantage just using created at root and pointing to the endpoint would be that in the headers, we actually return the location where they can go and fetch this record. So you see, it, it did have a certain purpose. So if I just, you know, the client, if they look in the headers and just get location after I've returned uh, the data like that, they can actually just use that and do a get operation and retrieve their record. But of course I'm not authorized. So you know that whole shebang already, they'll have to go through and do all of that. Now on the point of being authorized, I don't think it's harmful to allow somebody to retrieve a hotel by ID, 
right? So we did authorize it initially because we were testing. However, in practicality, I don't think we need to authorize get hotel. If we allow them to get the list, they should be able to get one. However, I do think that it would be good to authorize who can create. All right. So it's up to you. It's business rules and your needs will determine where you put the authorize and how much security you enforce around your endpoints and operations. So in this situation, I'm going to authorize create hotel. So you have to be authorized. And to make matters worse, if you are not in the role of admin, then you shouldn't be able to do this. So to enforce roles based authorization, I can say roles equals and then list out as many roles as I want to support. So if I say authorize roles equals administrator, that means if you are authorized, you get your token, but you are a user, not an administrator, then you cannot carry out anything. You're still not authorized. However, if you're an administrator, then you can go right ahead. So that is how, once again, you can go about enforcing one, what endpoint do you expose to John Public versus an author authenticated user? And then by extension, how do you extend these functionalities to which authorized group of users? You can authorize based on policies, roles, and there are quite a few options available to you. If you just press comma, you'll see that you have the authentication scheme. You could make one JWT, another one password, auth, etc., etc. You can enforce a policy and you can limit it by roles. So there are quite a few options for that. So right now I'm going to challenge you once again, what we just did with Create Hotel. I encourage you to try and do it with the country. Make sure that you test it and that you get back your country successfully and we'll compare notes. And we're back. I hope you paused and attempted it. If not, then go ahead and pause now. But I'm going to walk you through what I did. And really and truly, you'll notice that the code is almost identical. One, we're in the country controller. We have the same authorization measures. Once again, your context may be different from mine, but we want to just make sure that we secure the endpoints accordingly. We are doing it up HTTP post. We have similar return types to what we did with the hotel, except for the action, I'm going to call it create country. We're passing the appropriate DTO. We validate the model state firstly, and then we go ahead and add just in the same fashion. And then we created that root, get country, pass over the object, and we made sure to add that name here. So you see, once you get the hang of this, unless you have some extreme circumstance where you have to do extra computations and calculations, and even then it would just be a matter of mapping over or, well, yeah, you wouldn't probably wouldn't get the calculated values through the DTO. So you map it to the object type and then you do all your calculations and then you insert and save. So there's really not that much to creating resources in your API. Thank you.